Okay, so I think we can start. Um, I said welcome everyone. Um, as you may know, I'm Mariangela Pellegrini. I work for the ERN Euroblnet, the European Reference Network on Rare Hematological Disease, and very happy to welcome all of you on behalf of this European network. So today we are going to assist to a lecture that is foreseen in a bigger program, a comprehensive cycle of webinar that is named Topic on Focus on Sickle Cell Disease for Patients and Their Family. Uh, today is the third session. And before entering into the session, um, I would like to share with you some home rules. So as you are seeing, this um, yes, session is yes, recorded uh, because we are going to implement the video on our e-learning platform. And uh, also uh, your microphone will be muted along all the presentation, but at the end, uh, we will have a possibility to uh, talk together, so there will be a, a question and answering session. So for um, asking questions, please write them in the chat. So you have the cloud symbol in the bottom of your screen. You can address your question there. So uh, we can arrive at today's session. So today we are going to talk about hydroxyurea and fertility. Uh, with us, uh, there will be any need for presentation. <laughs> we have Professor Marianne de Montalbert from uh, Hôpital Necker in Paris. Um, she, as you know, she specializes in sickle disease, in pediatrics, statistics, ethics. She works a lot with uh, patients and education. And she's also a member of Euroblonet, the EHA. It's a very quick presentation, but I'm very happy to pass the floor to Marianne de Montalbert. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mariangela. Uh, it's uh, Mariangela explained that indeed I am a pediatrician in the hospital Necker en Malade in, in Paris. And I was asked to make a presentation on the hydroxyurea and fertility in uh, sickle cell disease. Uh, thank you for giving me uh, this opportunity. When you want to think about the role of hydroxyurea on the fertility in sickle cell disease, you have first to think about what is the impact of sickle cell disease by itself on sickle cell on fertility. And the question is, do people with sickle cell disease have a normal fertility without any drug. And in fact, we know very few things about the fertility in patients with sickle cell disease. And there are very, very few reports and very, very few studies about the fertility of patients with sickle cell disease. And perhaps it was not considered as an active field of investigation because all of us, we know fathers and mothers with sickle cell disease who have had children. And therefore, it was probably estimated that fertility was totally normal. Before beginning this presentation, we have to define what is infertility. And it is defined in terms of a couple. It is not a question of only one individual. And the definition of fertility requires a couple attempting to conceive and failing after the definition requires now 12 months of regular intercourse and when the woman is less than 35 or at least 35 years of age. We are going to begin with fertility in male patients with sickle cell disease. And there are indeed not many publication. And this one was published in 1981, meaning that the patients, of course, were not receiving hydroxyurea because at this period of time, no one was receiving hydroxyurea. And the first observation is that this report shows a decreased fertility 
in men with sickle cell disease, even not treated by hydroxyurea. And you see sperm concentration decreased, sperm count decreased, morphology of spermatozoa modified, motility of spermatozoa decreased. Another French report was published in uh, 2008. And here is the first part of the study. It was the analysis before introducing hydroxyurea. The definition by the WHO guidelines of normal sperm requires at least 20 million per milliliter of spermatozoa, a forward motility above 50%, a sperm viability above 60%, and a percentage of normal spermatozoa above 30%. Considering this definition, less than 10% of participants had all the sperm parameters considered as normal. This is, is without hydroxyurea. But what the author underlines is that semen analysis are not properly a test of fertility. And what will be the most important issue during this presentation will be that even patients with severe abnormalities may father children. As I said in introduction, perhaps fertility was not an issue in sickle cell disease because we are all aware of others with sickle cell disease. But nevertheless, when you look at those data, there are biological observations of abnormal sperm parameters. Why? In fact, we do not know exactly. There are hypotheses, and I have reported these hypotheses. Some, patients, some physicians think that patients experience, as they experience bone infarcts, they may experience testicular infarcts, but uh, we have no proof about that. What is sure is that chronic hypoxia induces hypofertility and that vasoocclusive crisis induce hyperfertility because when we want to perform sperm cryopreservation, we know that after a painful crisis, there are very few spermatozoa. Therefore, chronic hypoxia is surely a problem responsible for this hyperfertility. Another hypothesis is the role of priapism. The priapism is a prolonged undesired erection of the penis. We think that it may be underreported because sometimes the adolescents, they are ashamed to report about priapism. So maybe it could be also the rule of priapism. And the studies I have shown you haven't taken into account the severity of the disease. And finally, we do not understand why male patients have basically a decreased fertility. If you add hydroxyurea, what will happen? The first point is hydroxyurea decreases pain and increases life expectancy of patients. These are some publications which are very well known by the physicians. This one is the initial one published 20 years ago, and it was a comparison of rate of pain in patients with hydroxyurea or with placebo. Hydroxyurea decreases pain, decreases acute syndrome, and decreases blood transfusion need. Hydroxyurea decreases pain in infants and in children. Less pain, less acute syndrome, less hospitalization, less transfusion, less lactalitis. These findings are the same in Africa. Hydroxyurea decreases sickle cell-related events. 
malaria, pain, transfusion need, acute chest syndrome rate, death. Hydroxyurea increases life expectancy and decreases pain. The same for adults. This is the survival, the survival probability. It is higher in patients receiving hydroxyurea than in patients not receiving hydroxyurea. What is the impact of hydroxyurea on spermatogenesis, given that it is a chemotherapeutic agent? Some minutes ago, we have seen this part before hydroxyurea, then during hydroxyurea. In this study, you can see that the percentages of abnormality increases. If you consider the volume of ejaculate, 55% of adults had abnormalities before hydroxyurea, it is 50% after hydroxyurea. Vitality, percentage of living, 43, 50. But very low number of patients, we do not know if these patients were very severe or not. And again, semen analysis are not a test of fertility. And even patients with severe abnormalities may father children, which is a key sentence. Berthaud, she's French, published another series some years after. Again, 35 men who accepted to have um, to have exam, sperm examination before hydroxyurea, after hydroxyurea. And you see the decrease for most of them. Some of them, it does not change, and for some of them, it increases. But globally, it is very likely that in many patients, hydroxyurea decreases fertility while it is taken. But it decreases surely less fertility than bone marrow transplant and gene therapy, which both of them induce azoospermia. We can perform sperm banking, and we recommend you will see that to propose sperm banking before treating a puber boy with hydroxyurea. The major question is to know whether hypofertility results when you stop hydroxyurea. Do sperm parameter return to normal? It was very difficult to find any papers. And in, fi in fact, perhaps it is too early to have results, but I found only two papers. The first one is this one published in 2007. I will read this last sentence. Among sickle cell disease patients without hydroxyurea, without, 18% of patients had few spermatozoa and 4% had no, also no spermatozoa before. Among sickle cell disease patients with hydroxyurea, 20% instead of 18 developed few spermatozoa and 10% instead of 4% developed no spermatozoids. Seminal fluid parameters reverted back to normal after cessation of hydroxyurea for three months in 73% of patients. Normalization after stopping the treatment for three months in 73% of patients. We think that most of the time we may have to wait more than three months, but six months, in fact. And in children, this is a work performed here in our hospital. These are children, and these are each you naive. Children, they have never taken hydroxyurea, and these ones are each you exposed. They have received hydroxyurea initiated at six years of age. And they have, they have stopped hydroxyurea for a washout period of 2.5 years. No difference. 
no difference in the rate of abnormal abnormalities between children treated with hydroxyurea, but hydroxyurea stopped, and children never having re received hydroxyurea. But these populations are short. There are not so many patients, 20, uh, 15. And they are not really comparable because each naive children, 52% of them were regularly transfused. And each exposed children, 100% of them were regularly transfused. So it is not a perfect study. But it is a study which suggests that abnormalities may reverse when the treatment is stopped. The current protocol proposed in Necker and for Malad Hospital is to propose before beginning hydroxyurea when the adolescents are puber, the storage of frozen sperm. And when hydroxyurea is started in infancy, we propose when the adolescents ask for that, or the family asks for, to stop hydroxyurea. But when we stop hydroxyurea, we know that the patients are going to have painful crisis, and we know that painful crisis decrease spermatozoa. Therefore, during the period where hydroxyurea is stopped, we propose monthly transfusion. And we go on with monthly transfusion until the patient has performed a positive sperm banking. Females. This is a new question because for years we thought that the fertility in females was absolutely normal. We know that there is a puberty delay. In fact, we know that uh, girls have their periods later than uh, their sisters or mothers. And uh, we know also that the puberty is delayed in males. We know that many women, they have painful crises at the onset of their menses. What was new was that we discovered that there was what we call a primary ovarian insufficiency with the risk of premature menopause in women with sickle cell disease. Having told that, we all know fathers and mothers we having sickle cell disease and who have had children. This is a rather recent publication. In red, it is sickle cell disease patients. In orange, non-sickle cell disease patients. And these are the levels of anti-Mullerian hormone. Anti-Mullerian hormone is a marker of ovarian function. You see that it is almost as normal in sickle cell disease and non sickle cell disease, but there are more women with low levels of anti-Mullerian hormone in sickle cell disease. Negligible and reduced is more frequent in women with sickle cell disease. And what we see also, it is the patients, the rate of patients with no Mullerian hormone, which means risk for uh, menopause. And you see that the rate of sickle cell disease women is quite higher than the rate of non sickle cell disease women. At age 26, it is 90% of women with very low level of anti Mullerian hormone, which say that women with sickle cell disease should have their babies not too late, because if they wait until older than 35 years of age, it may be very, very difficult for them. They have to make babies rather early. It was before hydroxyurea. Now we are going to introduce hydroxyurea. What is the impact of hydroxyurea in female patients with sickle cell disease? The paper is really recent since it was published in blood in 2022. What is studied here is a diminished ovarian reserve. And what is written is women with sickle cell anemia have 
higher rates of diminished ovarian river reserve than each age match controls. In a study of, 20, of 10 to 21 year old females with sickle cell anemia, diminished ovarian reserve occurred in 24% of hydroxyra treated subjects and none of the untreated subjects. Again, fertility is decreased in women and hydroxyria may increase this decreased fertility. Another publication I have put in red, <clears throat> uh, the <clears throat> age range of uh, females between 14 and 17 years old. You see that in this age range, 14 to 17, sickle cell anemia, females, they all have normal ovarian reserve. But those treated with hydroxyria, it is 70% who have normal ovarian reserve. And when you look at the rates of mothers, of, of sorry, of uh, adolescents, 14 to 17, who have had bone marrow transplants, no one have normal ovarian reserve. I do not consider the uh, later uh, category because it was only based on three patients and you cannot have scientific conclusion on only three patients. Uh, as well, there is a question of what is called teratogenicity, which is the risk of having abnormal babies when you are taking a drug. No malformation has never been evidenced in babies from mothers treated with hydroxyurea. Nevertheless, there are very uh, cautious recommendations to use effective contraception. If a woman becomes pregnant while taking hydroxyurea, the uh, recommendation by the company are to say that she should be advised of the potential risk to the fetus. But um, in fact, we observed that there is no risk for the fetus. And the recommendation is not to uh, give breastfeeding. We wanted to see in real life with what happens with hydroxyurea in patients with sickle cell disease. And we have made a study which was called Escotatium. We gathered, uh, we gathered uh, 2,000 patients with sickle cell disease, uh, and uh, two thirds of them were receiving hydroxyurea for more than three years. We recorded 125 pregnancies in 101 women, which, which means that there is apparently no impact of hydroxyurea on the point of having a baby. There was absolutely no malformation among the neonates. All babies were normal. In the same period of time, we recorded two pregnancies in partners of male treated with hydroxyurea, only two, 12 pregnancies. Why? First explanation, median age was 33 years, perhaps uh, men 33 years old are not very, very uh, in emergency for having a baby. Second option, the sterility is decreased in sickle cell disease, which we know it is. Third option, it is the role of hydroxyurea. So far, I do not know which is the good explanation, but we are going on with this study and perhaps we will be able to answer. In conclusion, we know that hydroxyurea decreases pain and decreases acute syndrome, and hence, it increases fertility. But we have observed that hydroxyurea decreases spermatogenesis. We have some preliminary studies suggesting that this effect is reversed when hydroxyurea is stopped. And so far, I cannot tell you anything more about the scientific data 
about fertility and hydroxyurea. Thank you. I'm ready for the questions. Thank you very much, Professor. And I also encourage the audience to raise questions because as I said, always this is a unique occasion for addressing question to such an expert clinician. And of course, if you don't feel comfortable in writing the question, you can raise your hand and I will give you the possibility to unmute yourself. In the while waiting for the first question, I have one, well, I will say curiosity because um, I would like to know, uh, starting from which age the clinicians start explaining to female and male patients as we see both are concerned about their fertility and also the ethical which is behind uh, the choice of um, taking hydroxyurea, stopping hydroxyurea and go on with the family plan, let's say. Thank you. So Maria Angela, we said nothing for you for to uh, female because we were not aware of that. We were absolutely convinced that there was no impact of, of uh, sickle cell disease on mm. fertility of females. I, I, I am working with patients with sickle cell disease for 30 years, and I was convinced that fertility was normal. So uh, it was published uh, past year. These, um, so it was really uh, totally unknown and unpredicted that there was an impact of sickle cell disease on fertility of females. So uh, it's very, very new. About male patients, in fact, uh, we have been uh, talking about this problem for many years in, uh, in France and in Europe. But in the States, they do not speak at all about fertility issues because uh, they say there are no reports, there are no publication, and it is simply not explained to families in the States. And past year, I had a friend, she is working in, uh, I don't remember, in Boston, or I don't remember the city in the United States, and she was totally surprised, and she said, but in the United States, no one speaks about this problem to families, never. So this is the question. Thank so you. I have a question on the chat, thanks. Excellent question. Uh, not demonstrated the relationship between dosage of hydroxyurea and the quality. Uh, I think it is really an excellent question, but the point is that there are so few uh, patients in the clinical study. You have seen uh, 30, 20, 25. So that finally they have not enough statistical power to show any relationship between the dosage and uh, the uh, quality of sermon. So excellent question, but not enough studies to be able to answer, but very, very, very good question, of course. And thank you. Um, I'm receiving some question privately because participants fail more, uh, there is writing privately. So I also want to share with the rest of the audience, if you prefer to remain anonymous, you can write to me or to Professor Marianne, we will answer your question. So we'll go for the second one. Are there going to be more studies on sickle cell disease patient on hydroxyurea to do with fertility? There seems to be many questions still from what you're saying as sickle cell disease doctor. Yes, I think so, but mainly in Europe because in the States, uh, the, uh, well, how to say that? In the States, uh, they say we have no studies, we're not going to uh, speak to the no. families and they are not going to perform studies. So there are going to be studies, but not so much in the uh, United States, mostly in Europe. Um, Fertility think... is one thing, but what about, uh, sorry, I, I take your rule. Uh, no fertility, sorry, tac, tac, tac. Fertility is one thing, but what about the advice concerning having the risk of a baby 
I told you there is no risk, there is no teratogenicity. It is called teratogenicity. And so far, there is no teratogenicity. When a woman uh, takes hydroxyurea during the pregnancy, she has an eco, eco like all the other women. And uh, that's, that's it. There is nothing and there is no, we have really the feeling after now uh, several hundred babies that there is no teratogenicity, so no risk for the baby. Thank you. Um, can the professor speak more about the discontinuation of hydroxyurea during breastfeeding? So, okay, tuck, 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 thank you. Uh, uh, yes, uh, in fact, it is recommended by the company which produces the drug, but it is debated by the American teams who uh, think that uh, breastfeeding can be uh, pursued. But uh, I see that there is Doha in the chat. Doha, uh, if you can answer to this question. Uh, uh, for me, Doha uh, Bashir, Dr. Doha Bashir. For me, the, the company says you have to stop breastfeeding, but uh, there are no scientific data to uh, recommend, in fact, this position. So, Dora, what, would you add something on this issue? If you have uh, your uh, microphone. No, if not, so I, we are going to ask to when Dora will. Uh, why do you think they are not thinking, talking about this issue in the, I don't know. So, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know, because I'm very uh, close to um, uh, this, uh, the American team, of course, but they say that uh, as well, as far as we have no proof, the, the, their idea is that you may have children with abnormal sperm parameters. You may have children with abnormal sperm parameters. That's the idea they have. So uh, do you send a thing for the presentation? Can you confirm you mentioned a... No, I do not say males with sickle cell disease. I said a female with sickle cell disease. Uh, sorry, you, I, I didn't say that. I said, I confirmed that there are papers telling that there is a decreased ovarian function in females and they have, they must have their children before the age of 36, not males. I have no data about males. So I do not confirm for males, I confirm from females this publication, and there are several now publications, but it is very, very, very new. Doha, uh, do you think there are not, uh, okay. Protocol in care, how? So regarding the protocol in use in care, how many patients perform spam banking before um, minority of them? We propose, but it is a minority who perform spam banking but it is proposed. How many times a frozen sperm was used? I don't know because I am a pediatrician. I am a pediatrician and uh, when uh, my patients are 18 years of age, they are not willing to have children. So I, I can't tell it. Perhaps Dora, who is a doctor of adults will be able to answer. Uh, what about fertility preservation? Uh, yes, uh, uh, as it is done in oncology, it is a surgery. Uh, indeed, we can, uh, uh, for um, to preserve, uh, what about fertility preservation at a young age, as it is done in oncology to preserve testicular ovar ovarian tissue? I should say that for uh, ovarian function, it does not need, uh, it does not see seems needed because in fact uh, the impact of hydroxyurea on fertility for females we have shown recently that it exists but it is not a very strong one so i would not my advice would not be to uh, perform uh, ovarian uh, preservation mm -hmm. before using hydroxyurea really about uh, preservation of testicular at, on a young age, it is a surgery. You have to, uh, to uh, sample uh, testicular uh, tissue. Uh, it is not uh, very uh, light. Uh, uh, it, it is a surgery and so far it is not, uh, it, has, it has not been done already. 
Okay, end of the chat. Um, I think there was uh, Loris Brunetta wanted to. Uh, ah, yes, he had his uh, hand raised. You're right, you're yeah. right. And you can unmute in the case you want, you prefer to talk. Okay, okay, thank you. I, I'm a thalassemia patient actually. So, but uh, it's a curiosity because I attended the meeting here in Italy. And as far as I know, there is uh, the intention to extend the use of hydroxyurea also in children younger than two years. Uh, so uh, considering the impact that uh, the use of this drug can have on fertility, uh, what do you think? Uh, I it, it is manageable for, for this kind of uh, children of this age to, to have the uh, uh, safe use of this drug. There is, it depends on what you call safety, because uh, life is, um, hydroxyra increases life expectancy and decreases pain. It's always a debate of the benefit risk ratio. We know that many children the need hydroxyurea just to avoid pain or to avoid chronic organ damage. And we know that if we do not treat them, they will have so many complications that it won't be an easy life for them. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm persuaded. <laughs> I, I, I agree definitely. Uh, but, uh, you know, considering the, the population that is going to be involved in the use of hydroxyurea, uh, it is important for the family to be aware of all the possibility that uh, the use of the drug can impact uh, in future on fertility. Of course, it's, I, I think it's much more important to treat the children uh, for them to be safe and to have uh, a prolonged uh, life expectancy. But I think it's also important to explain correctly to the family and uh, in, in order for them to understand why uh, you suggest the use of hydroxyurea. That's why we are <coughs> we have this discussion, of course. But look at this uh, presentation by um, in Africa, which was uh, in Africa, and of course, uh, fertility is a major issue for many African mothers. But when you look at death, you have the decrease in death rate. And my friend Leon Chilolo, he says. Um, he proposed hydroxyurea to all children, all children, whatever the severity of the disease, because he says that he will reduce death rate. And he speaks about fertility. He, he, he is not a liar, Leon. He tells always the truth. Okay, thank you, thank you. It, it was a curiosity for me just because, because uh, I do not use hydroxyurea, but it is a very interesting discussion and an excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Loris. Thank you to all. So um, until now, I see no other question, but maybe we can wait one minute. Just uh, a long question arrives. So. Um, I think I missed this part and I'm not very versed in this medication topic, but for how long has this drug been tried on patients and is it available in Switzerland? I have never heard of this medication from my hematologist or my daughter's doctors. Is it comparable to Litalir? I don't know how to pronounce it, Litalir. So it is, uh, I am looking at what is Litalia because in France we do not have Litalia. It is peroxyhydroxyurea, really, I don't know. Uh, Litalia, I'm just checking on my iPhone what is Litalia. Litalia. Litalia, hydroxyurea. Yes, it is uh, Litalia. It is exactly the same. 
Um, it's written Litali hydroxycarb because this drug has many, many names. It is hydroxyurea or hydroxycarbamide. In the States, it's called droxia. In France, it is either hydroxyurea or cyclose. And Litali is the Italian name indeed. Yes, absolutely, it is the same. I didn't present the uh, mode of action of hydroxyurea because I was thinking it was not uh, the uh, topic of the presentation. But Litali is uh, hydroxyurea. Okay. It was uh, used for the first time in uh, 1992. So it makes 30 years that it is used in patients with sickle cell disease. 30, 30 years. And 1992 in, in Europe or in the USA first? first the Europe. first person who used hydroxyurea in, in the world is me. I, I made the first trial in children in 1992 for historical reasons. I was working in the care and one of my colleagues was a cardiologist. And he observed that hydroxyurea was useful for some children with cardiac disease. So he was using hydroxyurea in children for many, many years. He, mm. he had absolutely no side effects. So uh, when it was published in adults, I was thinking that it could be good for children. And I was the first center in all the world to use hydroxyurea in children. Oh. And it was a sort of, it was unbelievable because children, they were no more painful. It was an extraordinary the effect. Mm. Wow, it's a very inspirational story. Thank you for, for sharing. Um, so another in the USA, what is the name for it? Droxia. Uh, for me, it is Droxia. D-R-O-X-I-A. Okay, I think we arrived at the end of the please. Spell droxia, yes, it's written in the chat, D-R-O-X-E-A. Okay, so I think we arrived at the end Three. of the webinar. Or hydrea, but in, uh, sorry, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, um, in the US, they have, they have uh, hydrea, uh, maybe also hydrea, I think. But I think that uh, the, the uh, that it is also the story. The American company who produced hydrea was not interested in developing it in sickle cell disease. So I think they sold Hydrea and they sold it to make drugs here. Oh, okay. Okay, so no new questions. So I think it's the part where I thank all of you for the great debate and mostly Professor Marianne de Montalbert for sharing with us her time and expertise and giving such a comprehensive and clear presentation. So big thank you to all of you.